Cardinal fans, welcome to Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And Coach, uh, extremely tough loss uh, at St. Joe this past Saturday. Uh, jumped up 28 goose and uh, uh, they came back. You went, ended up going in overtime and uh, lost that one. But I know you were really pleased by the way the kids prepared for the last game of the year. And uh, going into that, I thought you felt like you had a real good shot and you did in that one. Yeah, I think we, we might have been the only ones in our locker room that thought we had a shot. And, uh, you know, a tribute to our players uh, on a season where the win-loss record doesn't go like, like you want it to. It Does it go like it's supposed to where we're at? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But it doesn't go like any of us, you know, planned or, or right. intended it for. And, you know, you get down late in the season and they continue to go and go and go. And, uh, you know, that preparation is, is you know, you know, you can see it when you go up early in a game like that against a team that you're not right. supposed to be able to compete against. And, and uh, so that, that part of it was great to see and the effort that they gave down the stretch in the season and the improvement we made at that point uh, after having a tough stretch there in the middle. Well, Coach, you blocked a couple punts again. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, we've yeah. really became experts at that in the year. Would you, would you, you know, find a little key there we, that you didn't have? We went on a on a drought of a couple of years, and then all of a sudden, I don't know, we brought what, five down the stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, in the season and you know a lot of it's the focus we've put on it that we've put on it the whole time it's just it's just like turnovers they come in bunches usually yeah it really you know, does takeaways come game. in bunches and and uh, that's been you know for us in the kicking game as far as our pump block unit and coach Weigel does a great job of scheming it and and uh, putting that together and the players you know buy into it and, and, and execute it extremely well so that was that gave us it set up two scores for us on Saturday which was big uh, you know so that part of it was was nice, and then on the other special teams part, you know, we, we get a big punt return by Thomas Cook early in the game down to set up a score inside the 10, and, and uh, you know, we had, we scored our first, you know, three of our first four scores were on really short fields, and that's a big deal. Yeah, anytime you can score you know, on short fields and have that it's kind of production in, in, the, in the kicking game, and we have a long pass play down the field to Nate, and, you know, one to, um, to Anthony Mullins, and and so we really got going early and you know it was 28 to nothing before they knew what hit them and then they they scored on the last offensive play of the first half uh and so that you know that kind of got the momentum slowed down and you know gave them a little life going into halftime and and uh you know the second half was was what it was it was you know fighting tooth and nail for for every yard and and uh them making some plays in the passing game with and against the wind and and uh, you know it all—it didn't turn out like we wanted it to. We'll just—we'll put it that way. Well, you know, let's talk a little bit about the end of the ball game. Uh, you know, I—the uh, wind was howling really the mm -hmm. last three or four days, and in the last three or four games, yeah. the wind was really howling. So that really, like in golf, football is very similar. The wind is the thing that most affects a, a ball game, I think. No I doubt don't know about how it. How you feel about it? You know, that. and we had—you know—we had the wind in the fourth quarter. And you know that's you know from mm -hmm. from the the game within the game of trying to position yourself to to be able to have the wind on a windy day like that late in the game and and we got to that point you know we kind of held them off you know when they had the win in the third quarter I think they had one score and, and made it 28-14 uh, I think and and we kick a field goal late or excuse me early in the fourth quarter to go up three scores and. Uh, you know, they they came out and executed about as well as you have to execute on every single play in the fourth quarter to get to the point that they got to. And, and uh, you know, we need to do some more things. You know, as you grow and as you learn to win, you know, you've got to, you've got to be able to understand how to deal with momentum. You bet. You when do. you have momentum, uh -huh. you know, you've got to be able to understand how to keep the momentum. And when you don't, you've got to, and when the momentum shifts, you've got to be able to get a stop or make a play offensively or make a play in special teams to, to switch the momentum back. And, uh, you know, we, we started to do that. We had a couple three and outs in the fourth, excuse me, in the second half, and I think one in the fourth quarter. And, and uh, offensively, we got some first downs and just couldn't quite get the last one that we needed to right. put it away. And, and uh, same thing defensively, we just couldn't quite get the last stop we needed to put it away. And, you know, in the kicking game, we had, you know, a play or two to make there that we just didn't quite make to put it away. And that's when you get a team in the situation that we had them on Saturday, no matter how good that team is. And, and obviously, they're eight and three on the season. That, that was a tremendous football team. You, we've got to finish. We've got to be able to use momentum and take momentum 
uh, you know, in those situations when we need to, to win. Well, football is such a finite game, and people don't believe this. You, uh, before we got on the air, we talked about you make one play, and the total difference, you get a victory. You make one play either on special teams, yep. you make one play defensively, or you make one play offensively, or they make a mistake when they're killing the ball. You yeah, know? They, you they, know? you know, they, it was eerie being there and seeing how it was unfolding in the fourth quarter was, you know, you kept waiting for, you know, one of those things to happen. And, you know, it, it was about perfect. I mean, they, it happened exactly how it had to happen for them to even have a chance to win it. And, uh, you know, all the way down to the last second, you know, when they get a first down, they're going down to clock it, and they clock it, and there's six seconds left on the clock, and they're kicking, you know, a longer – it wasn't a chip shot field goal. It was a longer field goal into yes, a 20-mile-hour yes, headwind yes. with a kicker who, hadn't, who had been less than dynamic – you know, this year and, and in the game. And, you know, they made the plays. They, to their credit, they made the plays they needed to to win that football game. And, uh, you know, they used momentum when they got it, and, and they they kept rolling. And that's that's part of the reason I think you've seen them be successful this year is they found a way to win those type of games because uh, they've been in some, some nail biters all year long. You know, they, they win the week before 6-3 to three right. and have to kick a field goal at the right. end. And, and uh, so, you know, a credit to them for for what they did, and we've got to do things better, you know, in those situations where we have momentum and, and we get up on a team. We've got to be able to maintain that. Well, in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the 2014 season and recruiting and some of the things about looking to the future. So we'll be right back with you, Cardinals fans, for the second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. I'm Jesse Limekiller, the CEO of Belvoir Winery. You can reach us at www.belvoirwinery.com. We grow Norton, Chamberson, Vignole, and Muscat on the site. We have mature vines, seven to 10 years of age behind the buildings, and then we have two new vineyards that have just started up. We have a full bar available, and then in addition, a lot of people like to wander around the property. You can take your drinks and wander through the property and see all the, the things that there are to see on site. My name is Jesse Limekuller, CEO of Belvoir Winery, 110 years in the making. Sometimes happy marriages fall apart, and divorce is the only way out. At a time like this, you need an attorney who will listen to you and will work for you. I'm Stephanie Shutt and I understand that divorce can be hard for anyone and I know the importance of a fair settlement. The decisions that are made now will affect the future happiness and well-being of you and your family. At Costello and Farah, we will fight for you. Call or visit 505-HELP and let me help you. Cardinal fans, welcome back to this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and we're just going to kind of wrap up, begin wrapping up the 2013 uh, season. This is our last Inside the Cardinal Playbook show, Coach, and you might want to tell the Cardinal fans exactly what takes place, because it's an emotional time. You have your seniors that are leaving. Uh, you got your banquet. You got all the things you're going to wrap up, and you might just want to talk about some of the process you and your staff go through to close out the season. Yeah, you know, it starts with, you know, compiling all of, all of the information that you've gathered throughout the season, whether that be statistics, whether that be, you know, different things in games where you want to make sure you're making a point of in the off season and, and beginning to put all that stuff together and, you know, filing those, those game situational things from each game and each week and uh, you've drawn upon throughout the season. Because you uh, can use that stuff yeah, later. Absolutely. Especially you know, against conference yeah, teams. Yeah, conference teams. And you never know. There's, you know, our profession, and, and there's so much movement in the profession of you where when a coordinator becomes, coming. a you know, the, you know, case in point, the, the offensive coordinator from Missouri Western last year became the head, head coach. coach at S and T, and and so there's a lot of that movement, and you know, so you try and and uh, archive as much of that stuff as possible, and and uh, make sure you have good notes on all the things that transpired, good and bad, uh, throughout the course of the season, and and make sure you can use those things as resources going forward, uh, and then with with the players, you know, we, we give them a day or two off here just to kind of catch their breath too. It, it's And you, you remember this, this is the, the, the craziest thing is that, you know, the day after the season You drop over, off a different world. You come back from a world that nobody understands unless you've been into yeah. to the normal world. Yeah, you, 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 you've been working literally 12 to 16 hour days, you know, for 100 plus days straight literally straight back to back to back to back and so you've always been doing something for half the year or a third of the year whatever it is you you're doing something constantly you're having to be somewhere you're you're eight up but yeah and that's what you are is so eight that up. first day after the season you know you, you 
you're, you're, you find yourself sitting there and you kind of, it's, it's a strange feeling because you're supposed to, you're used to being somewhere doing something different. And, and uh, so, you know, same thing with the players and we all need that release. We all need that break to, to clear our minds and uh, evaluate a lot of things. And, and uh, you know, so we give the players a couple of days here and we'll bring them in uh, tomorrow for a team meeting and, uh, you know, talk with them about protocol from the season and, and you know, kind of give one last, you know, send off just inside our group to the seniors and thank them uh, in front of the team and, and give them a chance to, you know, the players, the, their fellow players, a chance to recognize them. And then, uh, you know, after the seniors leave the room, talk to the, you know, the guys that are left in the room, you know, you, you see them start looking around and going, okay. Realize well, they're the deal. Yeah, we're, the, we don't have those guys to lean on anymore. Right. And uh, so, you know, who, who becomes the next guy to step up? Who becomes, who's going to take it upon themselves to make, th make sure this thing continues in a positive direction? And, and uh, so that part of it you know, we'll do this week. And then we've got, you know, uh, our banquet coming up here uh, early December before finals. And, and that's always an emotional night as well, as you well know, is, you know, you get together in that time and, and uh, to talk about the positives from the season and the growth that's happened for, for the young men involved. And, and uh, in a, a big part of it is to honor your seniors and the commitment they've made and the time they've spent and, you know, the efforts they put into, you know, growing a program and, and uh, being leaders and those type of things. And, you know, it's always at the end of that night as you're bringing each senior up, you it kind of starts to hit you is that you've watched them grow. It's emotional time. Oh, man, for for you you've know, three been, or four years. You've been like their parents, uh, particularly in a college setting. Yeah, you, You're the guy that they go to to relate to even classes, uh, personal yeah, situations, I mean, whatever. You've been everything from, from father to friend to, to brother to, mm -hmm. you know, you've played all those roles throughout most of their careers. You know, all of us, you know, in that four-year time at this age, they all go through something at the time, at some point where they need some, some guidance and some support in, whether it be on the field, off the field, or, or personally, or what have you. And, and uh, there's such an emotional connection, and you see, you see them mature during this period of time. And, you know, you have some great memories of on-the-field stuff, but I'm telling you, the ones that really last for you are the off-field things and, and the growth that Practice. you see. Yeah, that, and just... Even some of the things they go through in life, and what you, how you see them grow socially and, and personally, and and uh, the person they've become over the last several years, and you know, it's it's uh, it's a good feeling to know you've had some part of that, whether it be a small part or not. You know, their parents have done a great job, and and uh, you know, them, they've grown with their teammates, and and uh, it, it's a it's a fun night, and uh, you know, with the with the couple being kind of a a bittersweet night and the fact that you know that your, relation, your relationship is going to change with those guys going forward just because you're not going to be able to see them every day. Well, in our last segment, Coach, we're going to talk about your evaluation of the 2013 season, so we'll be right back with our last and final segment of the 2013 Inside the Cardinal Playbook. I am a helpful smile in seafood. We have more fresh fish flown in daily from the dock to my case in two days. Hyvee is one of the only retailers in the nation with their own USDC Seafood Inspector. We've got amazing seafood from all around the world. King crab flown in from the Bering Sea. We catch fish and shrimp right out of Louisiana. Oh yeah, this is fresh. Look at it. I am a helpful, sustainable, USDC inspected. Two days flown in, fresh smile. And that's my promise. Tanner's is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. They're open Sunday through Tuesday from 11 a.m. until midnight, and Wednesday through Saturday from 11 until 1.30 a.m. Come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Happy hour specials are served from two spots in the building, and the service is fast and friendly. Tanner's of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Before the game or after the game, it's Poor Boy Oil Company for your pre- and post-game food and beverage. ConocoPhillips and BP Amico Fuels get you to the game, and our large vendors give you great food and beverage choices before or after the game. Our small town roots and family value philosophies help us to maintain the highest standards in customer service and value. Poor Boy Oil Company, find us around the Northland, wherever the Cardinals fly. 
Welcome to the Inside the Cardinal Playbook, this segment of Coach Holly. And, uh, Coach, I don't think there's a segment in the world that means you can only talk six and a half minutes and when both of us get together, but we'll try. We'll talk a little bit about you. last weekend. Uh, you went up and played uh, Missouri Western and Northwest Missouri State. Uh, Two good programs. Uh, I know a lot of guys up in Northwest, but we're only really at both schools. So I know you were up against it a little bit. Why don't you talk about both uh, games? Well, we've uh, opened in this event the last. This is our third year to do this, and it's been good for us. Last year we split. This year we went 0-2. Right. Uh, Western has a new coach. Uh, uh, you know, we, we did not play well against Missouri Western, but give credit to Missouri Western. They had a lot to do with that. We struggled with our transition defense. We didn't shoot it well. We shot, uh, I think, 33% from the game for the game from the field, uh, about 15% from three. I think we were three out of 19, and uh, 12 out of 22 from the line. And and uh, when you don't play well and don't shoot well, that's not a good combination. And Western played extremely well. Uh, we did play better in the second half. Cut the lead to 12. Uh, we were down 24. Cut it to 12, and then uh, they got away from us again at the end to win by 23. The next night. Uh, Northwest jumped on us nine to nothing, and uh, I'm thinking, well, we better get this stopped. So we called timeout. Guys kind of regathered, and and uh, we got it tied at 25, and went back and forth. It was actually tied at 40 at the half. Really proud of the effort. Uh, ended up losing by seven, but uh, had a chance. Had a chance to win the game. Uh, but it's uh, it's you know tough opener for us. But uh, you know our SIU uh, Carbondale game uh, prepared us for it, and. Uh, uh, you know, that's we're Division Two, and, and those are the teams we've got to beat, got to compete against. And I was much, uh, I was more pleased, obviously, after the Northwest game than after the Western game. Well, we're going to talk about Pitt State and tomorrow night a little bit in a second. But uh, you know, you've had to make some adjustments, Coach. Uh, and I know you're a salty dog and been around the world two or three times. But uh, you know, anytime you have an injury, when you're counting on people and really kind of have to readjust what you're doing, you're going with three guards. Uh, you talked about it uh, before we got on the air, you know, 5'11", 5'11", 6 foot. So that's a different type of game than what usually you're used to playing all the years I've seen your teams play. We usually have a conventional lineup of two guards, two forwards, and a center. Truthfully, uh, a lot of teams have gone to three guards. Right. But usually one of those guards is a little taller and can play the three, can play the small forward. Uh, you mentioned injuries. Uh, unfortunately, in Wednesday, uh, before we went to Missouri Western, uh, Reith Jach, one of our top recruits, uh, 6'4", out of North Platte Community College in Nebraska, uh, dislocated his kneecap. And uh, we, we're not sure how long he's going to be out. going to be out a few weeks. Uh, hopefully we get him back in late December, mid to late December. But uh, we decided to start Jordan Lewis, and Jordan uh, did quite well this weekend. Uh, Jordan had 12 points in both games and uh, shot it well, played well. Uh, we are tiny. Uh, we are 5'10", 5'10", 6 foot. And uh, that would be small at the high school level, right. let, let alone uh, college basketball. Uh, but we're also, we don't really have a post player. And when we played against um, Northwest on Saturday, Northwest starts 6'10 and 6'8. And they're not skinny. They're big physical guys. And, uh, and our guys battled in there. But uh, we got hurt a little bit uh, with the physicality of it with their big guys. But uh, it's going to be an adjustment for us. Uh, we're probably going to play three guards quite a lot. Uh, we can certainly put uh, Surreal Belong in there at, at the three or the four and be a little bit bigger when he's at the three. But uh, our guys uh, showed up, played hard on Saturday. If we'll continue to do that, uh, we'll like the results. Well, you talk about matchups, though, Coach. Uh, you get this three guard uh, look going a little bit. I know all three of those guys can drive and shoot it a little bit. Uh, defending and rebounding, I know, is a concern of yours. but. The other team has to adjust as well. I, I think that's probably the angle you're taking with your club right now. Isn't it? Absolutely, but both both Western and Northwest played three guards, mm -hmm. uh, which helped us a little bit too. And uh, as long as teams do that, that will help us in terms of uh, Jordan being being able to guard that three if if we're starting him there. But but uh, we had a good mix. Uh, again, like the effort, uh, it's it's going to come down to. We talked early in the year, you know, earlier about uh, the concerns being defending in the post and defensive rebound. And uh, we actually kind of kind of held our own with, in terms of rebounding uh, with Northwest and, and Missouri Western. We did struggle a little bit with our defense in the post area. But uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, it puts another ball handler on the floor when you're playing three guards. And it does uh, create, hopefully, some mismatch problems for the other team as well. 
Well, you know, this is a dress rehearsal, this, these preseason games, uh, for when you get in a conference, which is one of the toughest uh, Division II conferences in the nation. Uh, and I think you're right. Uh, isn't your main goal to improve every ball game? It is. Always is. Uh, you're trying to get better every game, and uh, we just didn't start out very well against Western. Uh, we did play a lot better against Northwest. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes against Upper Iowa. I know they'll show up, be ready to go, and uh, but I like our chances. Okay, let me put you on a quick hot seat. I want you increase. I like you a lot, but just looking at the conference real quickly, top four teams you're looking at in the conference, in your opinion. Well, Drury is. Uh, picked on our side in the Western uh, Division, and uh, they graduated their three best players. But they played Duke this year in an exhibition mm -hmm. game at Cameron Indoor. They led Duke at Duke at halftime. They led Duke at Duke with 10 minutes to play. That says a lot, right? That, uh, especially after you've graduated your three best players. Uh, so that tells you a little bit about Drury. Uh, on the other side, Bellarmine, uh, which won the national title in 2011. Drury won it last year. Uh, they're ranked the highest of all the conference schools. I think we have three schools in the top, I think we have three in the top 25. Southern Indiana is also in there. I think UND is still getting votes. But uh, it's, you know, you could say, uh, at least at the top, it's the best league in the nation. We've won two of the last three national championships. And uh, it'll be a challenge for us. Uh, you know, our... Uh, there's now seven Missouri teams in that league, and that right. league was formed with schools from uh, Ohio and Kentucky and, it's really becoming and, a Missouri uh, league. and Indiana, and it was all formed for men's basketball, and it's just kind of moved uh, to Wisconsin and Illinois and Missouri, and as, you know, seven of the 16 schools are, are uh, in Missouri, and if Quincy was on the other side of the river, yeah. we'd have half of them. There you go. But uh, it's, a, it's a great league. Uh, we enjoy the competition, and, uh, uh, but back to your question, yes, these games are to get us ready for that. And we do have, I think, five straight home games. Uh, so hopefully we can get healthy uh, physically and get healthy in terms of wins and losses. Well, Coach, thank you for coming on Inside the Cardinal Playbook. I know you do a great job. Uh, your team will continue to improve, and uh, good luck. What should we do? Better call our shelter agent. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you got a sec? Yeah, sure. We know what the weather is like in your area because we live in your area. Shelter Insurance. For your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask Shelter Agent Kimberly Sidden about Shelter's competitive insurance rates. Welcome back, Cardinals, to the last segment of the year of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And uh, as they say, you know, the horse is in the barn, Coach. It's all over with. So uh, put you on the on uh, your evaluation of yeah. the 2013 season. Uh, an interesting season, a growing season. Mm -hmm. You know, this second year in Division right. Two, being in the conference, uh, seeing the conference already adjust before our eyes, right. just being in two years. <laughs> So you've got a lot of things to really ponder. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your impression of the 2013 season? You know, it's crazy that, that we were just talking about it off air here, is, is that it's, we're already to this point. I know, you it's know, And it's already in the books, and, and it feels like we just started training camp yesterday. Or we, even we just started spring ball yesterday, and, and all of a sudden we, we're here we are at the end of another year. And, uh, you know, I haven't had a, the full time that, you know, you – you take the off season and especially the first several weeks after the, the season's over to really sit down and evaluate all your thoughts about, you know, week by week through the season and, and where you where you grew, where you maybe need to grow more right. and, and uh, what your approach may be going forward and those type of things. But, you know, as I look at it, you know, it, the record wise, we're not, you know, where any of us plan to be. And, uh, you know, that's the hardest thing, I know, for, for everybody directly after the situation's over to, to swallow is, you know, we'd love to have flipped our record and be eight and three instead of three and eight. Um, you know, coming into our second year at the Division Two level and coming off a two and nine season last year, we've obviously shown growth from that. Uh, you know, going out early and 
you know, beating the NCAA Division One school was a big feather in our cap, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a something that, as you heard a lot of the seniors mentioned during their senior day, right. you know, getting, you know, talked about coming onto the field on senior day, that was a big thing that will stick with a lot of those guys for the rest of their life. Um, you know, we hit a stretch in the middle of the season where we, we were down a couple really key guys, and, you know, a quarterback in particular and, and some other guys that, uh, you know, that was a meat and potatoes part of our schedule where we were playing some really tough competition there, and and uh, you know didn't come out with the record we we would have liked at that point during the year. What I what I continue to be excited about is you know it would have been really easy during I think during that stretch where we lost five in a row right. throughout the middle of the season right. for for them to check it in. I mean at, at that point you know what are you what are you playing for? You know they could have taken that that vein pretty easily but that isn't the type of kid you recruit i've been here a long time yeah. i tell everybody really they're fine intelligent they're, good people exactly and you know they they're realistic too i mean would we have all liked to be 11 and 0 sure and that's what you plan for every single week and there's not one game this season where where we went out on the field not thinking we were going to win and that's the way it has to be and if it's not that way you know you need to evaluate yourself as a player and as a coach and, and make sure you're you're doing the right things and, and you're taking the right approach. But, you know, they, did, they took the approach that, you know, after that losing stretch in the middle of the season is, hey, we're, we're going to keep chopping wood here. We're going to keep rolling. And, and we go on the road and get a really nice win at Quincy and come home and, and uh, start off really, really fast against S&T. And they outlasted us in the end and, and won that one. We go on the road the next week and win a big one. And, you know, this last week was the, the, the craziest dynamic because, you know, we're we were a three and seven team going in to play a seven and three team, right. a long ways away on the road in some really tough conditions on the first grass field that right. was muddy that we played on all year, and and uh, it was not the best facility. No, but it would have been easy for players, you know, in that dynamic to say, hey, you know, we're we're three and seven, they're seven and three, we don't have a chance here. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna check this in early and and uh, you know, call it what it is, and and we'll just get on to the next season and. And they didn't do that. You know, they came out and practiced last week in some some uh, less than ideal conditions from a, from a temperature standpoint, a weather standpoint, and came out and really shocked a team that they weren't supposed to, that the record would say you're not supposed to be able to compete with or even be on the field with. And, and uh, you know, the only thing that, that, that I wish for them and for our players is that we could have, we could have found a way to finish that game you bet. and get a win. You that would have been three out of the last four. Three out of the last four, and that would have been four. We would have been four and one on the road. We finished the season three and two on the road. And, uh, you know, I can't remember, and I ha I'd have to look back, and I can't remember the last time William Jewell had a winning record on the road. Um, you know, and that's those aren't easy things to do. And, and uh, so there's a lot of things that this group was, was able to do that hasn't been done here in a long time or ever. You know, with the Division One win and, and those things is, you know, the the last game. Although it it being, it's, we're still all sick about it and and how we lost it. You know, we are we that are we that far away from all the things we want to be here? And, and I, I don't know. Maybe we are. But you know, if the last if the last game on the road is right. any indication, is you know, we go on the road and and lose an overtime to a a team that finished eight and three. And uh, won some big games this year against some really good competition. Uh, you know, are we that far away from you know, the goals that we 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 aspire for from a win and loss standpoint? And you know, we're gonna jump on the road here in recruiting and and uh, you know continue to work with the whole bunch of players that we have returning. You know, we're we uh, we're we're not graduating a ton of guys, and uh, that's that part of it's a, a huge positive and continue to build on the things that we did well this year and correct the things that we we didn't do as well and uh but but to see us respond in the second half of the season the way we did and, and finish the way we finished albeit you know the win on saturday would have been you know the the ultimate finish to that uh there's a lot of positives there well coach it's been my pleasure to be associated with you and your program uh, i know rick's enjoyed doing the games uh, your kids are class acts uh, they're going to be very successful in life i think sometimes in uh, what we do for a living we forget that really most of the time the high percentage of these kids got to come out and be good human beings and uh, learn life's lessons and i think you and your staff here at william jewel do a great job of that and i mean that to all the cardinal fans that are listening and 
Cardinal fans, see you in 2014.